Good morning. Uh, my name is Roman Gonzalez. Uh, my friend here, Tavis Rock. Uh, we are Birdside Software, and we are going to introduce to you a shorter path from Clojure to Clojure Script. Um, I just want to do a disclaimer pretty quickly. We are going to be showing uh, some tools here that we have developed ourselves for purposes. Uh, hopefully, some people will find them useful. Uh, but by no means, this are the only tools available out there. After being in the conference uh, these two days, I've seen a lot of amazing things going on, and uh, this is just one of the options. And on this presentation, I'm more advocating, we are more advocating the path of um, um, motivate you to translate your closure libraries to closure script. Uh, and I should interject here that uh, my friend Roman, his favorite pastime is porting libraries, and I'm very glad that he's moved on from porting from Haskell to Clojure, <laughs> to now focus on Clojure to Clojure script. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the common differences you find when you're dealing with code that you want to make um, in Clojure script compared to Clojure is a host difference mostly. Uh, the reg apps is completely different. The classes. Uh, it's not different types, so you got to change the definition of the protocols. And uh, there's also a small difference on the Clojure, Clojure Script API. I don't know if you have seen that on the protocol implementations of the Clojure Script side. Everything starts with a dash, while on Clojure doesn't. And sometimes that's really annoying. Um, and don't get me started with the namespace macro where you have actually different constructs to require the same things uh, because of the limitations of your script and the macros. Uh, there are many differences to small differences that even though they're small, they sometimes make you for completely your code and that's really annoying. Um, so first of all, we are going to uh, lay out the agenda and we are going to divide it into three sections and each of these three sections is going to be uh, introduced, in every of these three sections, uh, library is going to be introduced. Um, the first section is going to be how to port Clojure to Clojure script. And for this, we're going to use a library called line dialup. Uh, the second part is going to be how to use your same, same test with both on Clojure and Clojure script. And how to correct your typos. Oops. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Libraries. Um, and, um, and for that, we're going to introduce Buster CLGS. And the last one is going to work with Emacs to get a, feed, a fast feedback loop on Clojure Script development. And for that, we're going to introduce Sisyphus.l. So getting started with line dollop. Um, we should interject for one second here. So most people look at this and say, dollop, dollop, what the hell is that? It's an acronym that stands for decide as late as possible. <laughs> OK. Um, so line dollop is really inspired by the work uh, Kevin Lineag has done with CLJX. Uh, kudos for him. Um, one of the main differences is that in Clojure, in line dollop, the Clojure file is the source you're going to use to spit to Clojure script. Right. In, in CLJX, you have a separate file uh, that contains you both your Clojure and your Clojure script forms. It's got a .cljx extension, uh, so it's not Unless you're very careful, it's not a valid closure by default. It's got them mixed in there. And we wanted to start with uh, valid closure as your input and have closure script as your output. Mm -hmm. um, one other difference with that is um, Dalap, Line Dalap uses this library called Dalap, which is, in essence, a traversal of data structures that allows you to transform the, the, the data structure in any point of the way. Uh, well, um, line uh, CLJX uses core logic to navigate through all the forms and transform it as, as soon as it finds something. Um, also important, uh, with Dalab, you have this notion of CSS selector. So you have selectors of the data structure, and you can do some transformations on it when the selector matches. A matcher and a transformer, yeah. just like CSS rules. So the first thing to get started with Dalab is having this line dollop, um, the dollop rules file on the top of the project. And it has two things. The first thing is, um, well, it's a map of keys and values. The keys uh, in this context are the input closure file and the output closure script file. You will have to define each 
of the closure files you want to translate to closure script. And we want to be a, really as precise as possible on what you want to transform because sometimes you would like to have a common uh, file on closure closure script, but some other times you would like to translate just a closure to have just a closure script file. So we are really careful about what things you want to transform. As opposed to say a um, crossovers directory where everything in it is translated over or copied over. Um, the second argument, which is the value of this key, is going to be the rules that you're going to be uh, using, uh, and we're going to tackle that uh, later in the next slides. Um, the first thing to notice is to sometimes you just want to remove um, closure forms out of your closure script output. Uh, sometimes you're using Java methods or Java classes, and this doesn't make any sense in closure script. By using the closure script uh, meta tag, the closure meta tag that is uh, highlighted over there, um, you can say this form don't include it on my closure script output. So this will be an example of the closure input on the closure script output. Um, the second way you can interact with uh, line dialup is through ignore reader macros. You will have uh, two variants of it, CLJS and CLJS2. The CLJS1 will put that specific code on the closure script output. Uh, and the CLGS2 will do exactly the same thing, but wrap it all inside a do in case you want to do side effecting. Or multiple top level forms. Yeah. Um, so in this example, I'm sorry. Um, this will work on closure just because you're putting everything inside an ignore reader macro. And yeah, you can specify the closure script code there. The output will be something like um, in the top level, we already uh, used the CLGS uh, read, ignore reader macro to have the good URI. And on the, on the CLGS2, we have the definition of this request method. Um, so the NS issue on closure script can be handled with um, lined up the following way. You can use the ignore readers. Uh, to include certain parts for closure script. You can have the CLGS macro tag to transform a require to a require macro. Uh, you can remove the imports using the meta tag for CLJ. And in this specific example, you will have something like that. This is actual code from the protocol monads library, which we port, uh, which is Jim Dewey's, Dewey's library. One last bit that you can use is the closure script uh, replacement meta tag. This one is pretty handy. Um, sometimes you have a form that has certain purpose in Java and you have the equivalent in, J in JavaScript or closure script. Uh, and what you're going to do is say, in this form, which is sim uh, in, in side effect terms, it's the same thing, but for different platforms, uh, use this one for closure script and use this one for closure. So in this example in particular, we are uh, doing the namespace all again. And I let, like, this is not the way to do it now. Like, we used to do this, uh, but we deprecated in favor of what I showed you before. And the main reason is because you got repeated the namespace macro twice. And whenever you were modifying the imports, you did it on closure script, but not in closure. And sometimes, like, you have this replication there, and sometimes you forgot, and you started to see bugs, and you were like, why this is not working? Oh, because I forgot to Frail add memory. the same thing on the, on the second <clears throat> namespace declaration. So, yeah. Going back to the Dalap rules file, <coughs> um, you will have on the value section um, a list of pairs, a, a vector of pairs, where you specify the selector and the transformation that you're going to do. In this example, um, you can have high like functions that receive the form that you're visiting and return a boolean and this is going to be called with a dialab when. So in this example we are using the has meta function. And this is just checking that the form you're getting on on, on this specific moment has the CLGS meta tag. Um, the transform one is going to receive also the form that you're visiting and the walker. And it's going to get whatever is on the CLJS, on the meta tag, on the meta CLJS, and put it there instead of himself. Two things to note, note here is the bold section in the center is the default rules we're showing before. You don't have to manually specify these. The second thing is this is not a map, even though it's 
key value uh, because there's a order of precedence. The ones at the top trump any rules that might have matched below. So that's why it's a vector of pairs. So the simplest example we find is symbols. Symbols are selectors and transformers at the same time. By, in, in, the, in the selector instance, they just look up themselves. If they see themselves on the source code, they're going to be called. And when they're using it as a transform value, it's just going to replace himself with it. So uh, in this case, we are getting, every time we find a form of java.language string, we're going to replace it with the JavaScript string. Uh, when you're going to find d the DREF, you're going to change it for dash DREF. All these are also part of the default uh, rules that come with line data big N. So you don't have to specify yourself in every single file. I uh, should note here that if there is differences in the semantics between the two platforms, this is not going to help you. Mm -hmm. um, so you're on your own in terms of dealing with host platform differences. This is just the syntactic um, same thing, different name problem. Mm -hmm. So what we have seen so far is um, Blind Dala provides a group of same defaults. Uh, it, all the tags we have seen so far are implemented using the CSS like selector um, map. And all the uh, concrete types from Java are going to be translated to uh, JavaScript. Uh, the, the good news is that the API is extensible. It's a protocol. There are two protocols for the transformation and for the selection. And you can make your own data structures part of this protocol and use it on your data rules if you want to. Um, so enough of line data. Um, the next section we are going to focus on trying to make your test suite work both on Clojure and Clojure Script using the same code. So. When we got started, um, there were many options about the testing uh, options you have for ClojureScript. Uh, until recently, Chas released ClojureScript uh, that test, which is, looks like a pretty good tool. Um, I also saw Bottle releasing uh, the error library, which also looks pretty promising. Uh, the moment we just wanted to stand on the shoulders of giants, and we said, OK, what is available on the, on the JS, Node.js uh, environment? And these were some of the options we came up with. And we decided to go at the end with one called Buster.js. So the name of this library is called Buster CLGS. And what it provides is a way to, int, um, like provides a Clojure-esque API to interact both with the Clojure.test library on the JVM and the Buster CLGS library on the JavaScript end. So it's the same API, uh, exports m different things when you're running in one platform or the other. Uh, it's, as I said, again, it's not a new Clojure testing library. It's a wrapper on top of Clojure.test. Uh, one awesome thing about it is on, on, the Clo on the Buster JS spectrum is that you, can, you have a distributed uh, test runner. So you can have multiple browsers a slave to this runner. And when you want to run the test from the terminal, it would push the test suite on all these browsers, run it, and then come back to you and tell you what were the results in every of, this, of your slaves. So you can have slaves for mobile devices, uh, different browsers on different um, OSs, and you will see what the result will be. Um, to install it, you just have to add it to your dependencies. And let's get started with how Buster.js syntax uh, is. So you have this PDD style, uh, really similar to our spec, if you have seen our spec in the Ruby realm, where you have these descriptions, then you have a specification with it, and then you do the assertions. Um, when you see the same code, like in meaning, uh, on the closure side, you would see that there's an equivalent. Like you have the dev test, the testing is for descriptions, and you have this macro for assertions. So you can see there's a one-to-one -one mapping. Dev test maps to describe. Testing maps to describe as well. Testing maps to it. And the is it maps to assert. So we came up with this child, this pastor child, which uh, comes from the closure test and pastor JS union, where you have the dev test uh, construct, which um, 
it's def test enclosure the test bot describe in Buster. The describe it and is, and uh, this is how it would look in a in a, a full example. You will have the requires for closure script on the top. You will have the requires for closure on the bottom. Then uh, you use this function called initialize Buster to make the test work both on the Node.js and the browser. Um. So people might wonder, why do we have this initialized Buster? It's just to pull in some extra wiring that Buster needs for its event loop and uh, setting up state that it needs. And then you just use dev test with the describe and it, uh, and this macro, uh, which will work both in the JVM on, on Closure script. What happens if you uh, forget and don't put the describe and it? Does it still work on the Well, it'll work on the closure side and on the closure script side. On the closure script side, if you don't specify the it, it won't run the, 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 the thing. So you need to always wrap it inside this, the it, which is a bit annoying, but it's not that difficult. And we've been talking about uh, providing something that's like dev test, but automatically provides an it wrapper. It's uh, one of the minor annoyances there. So when we run the test uh, using the protocol, Jane Dewey's protocol monads library, it runs the way it should do. Uh, when we are doing it on the closure script side, we have tests for Phantom GS, Safari, Firefox in this, in this specific instance, and also Node. And it's the same test suite running on both ends. Um, so you have full coverage. Uh, this is an example of one of the tools uh, Buster GS provides that you have a static web page and you can run the test suite on the static web page, which is a URL. And it's really good for debugging purposes yeah. mostly. So this one here is in addition to the parallel test runner, uh, which you can run from the console. You can run uh, via various triggering, me triggering mechanisms. Here, uh, if you run into a test that's failing and you want to jump into your Chrome debugger or your Firebug, um, stack traces and figure out what the hell's going on. This helps. So uh, another cool thing we found is that we were able to use Travis CI to run all our tests on multiple platforms on, um, on the same run. So we are able to guarantee you that the library you're using for both Clojure and Clojure script both works in both ends with uh, continuous integration provided by Travis. This will be the file. You just have to copy paste this file to your own project and it will work. Uh, as long as your test works, of course. So this is the result for the cloud library that uh, it will install all the Node.js stuff for Buster running. And then we'll run the test for uh, Clojure and then the test for Node.js. And it does it also for the browser via Phantom GS. So uh, Travis CI provides a Phantom GS instance so you can run your tests on the browser as well. So lastly, the third. Which I just want to inject one thing there. So uh, last week, Chaz released uh, CLJS test, which is a um, fairly idiomatic port of closure.test, uh, a much more complete port of closure.test to ClojureScript. And we've been waving our hands about making Buster CLJS um, optionally defer to it and run its tests through that test runner. So you'd have better REPL integration for running your individual tests from the REPL. Um, so the wrapper syntax we've got here is just a very thin layer. And you could swap it out to either Chaz's library or other separate uh, test runners on the JavaScript side. Uh, so now we're going to show a test case for how we work uh, with Emacs on Clojure Script on Bird's Eye. And uh, Tavis is going to hop in for that one. OK, so there's lots of bits and pieces that you've got uh, on the go when you're working with uh, both transforming the code from Clojure to Clojure Script, uh, running your tests in the various environments. And the yellow boxes up at the top represent the different processes you've got running. Um, that's an Emacs buffer at the bottom. Uh, so you've got the nREPL or Swank uh, process running, and you're talking to it for running your closure tests. Uh, you've got the build process so using CLGS build and our line dollop plugin for it. 
Uh, and then after its test run, sorry, after its build completes, uh, Buster runs the tests for each one of your outputs. So switching to the protocol monads test file, I've got an example here wired up. We've um, called an ELISP function that starts all the subprocesses, um, initializes the uh, CLGS build auto compile, and uh, hooks into the after save hook in Emacs so that if we modify this file and save it, we get immediate feedback saying that the closure.test uh, version of it has succeeded. You can see that it's now running the Buster node and Buster browser tests, and you've got immediate feedback, uh, relatively immediate feedback for those as well, uh, asynchronously running them. So as you see that your closure.test run has succeeded, you can keep on going, keep working, and uh, not sit there waiting and twiddling your thumbs for the build process and the additional testing to keep going. So what about failures? Uh, it queues them up. So if you've got, um, do, do you mean in terms of multiple tests? So the closure test failed and the double delay failed. Uh, it'll keep on going, I believe, right now. Um, probably not a huge cost for having it do that. But one thing that we ran into during development is what happens if you, you save and then save again immediately? Uh, just because of the way that CLGS build is doing its job, you won't end up with multiple test runs if you save a couple times in a row. Okay, so I'm gonna make this test fail, save it again, immediate feedback on the closure side. A second later, you see it's running the browser tests, failure, a second later, the node tests, failure, or browser tests again. Switch it back immediate feedback, and so on. So it's really important to tell how this is displayed, like, well. Yeah. Initially, you have um, one comment that will get started all these different Sisyphus buffers over there. And each of those Sisyphus buffers is the process running. So you will have one for CLGS, for example, running the CLGS build. You will have another one for PhantomGS in case there's any exceptions. You will have one for ser the Buster server, which runs everything, and one for the Buster test as well. So in case you have a failure, you can jump in. I, I, there's an option on, on the Sisyphus library that allows you to jump there immediately in case there's an error. Um, and all this is being done automatically as we start with just one call. It will do unwrapple and all the closure script, all the closure script tools immediately in Emacs. So you wanted to show the slow initial build. Oh yeah. So, like in all fairness, sealed uh, closure script testing is slower than we would like, and right now it goes decently. Like, it's not ideal. That's why we have the test on on Java. Um, but initially, the first run, it will go something around 18 seconds to compile all your source code. And then after the JVM hotspot has warmed up a little bit, it will start, the, the number of seconds will start going down. That's why we need the automated build from CLGS in order to not be waiting forever for things to compile in order to run the tests. Okay. Now, going back to what we were mentioning before about Chaz's new library, the CLGS.test. Uh, with the REPL support there, you would get a faster feedback loop. Uh, but given our previous experiences working on CoffeeScript projects, which have a similar build, um, package, bundle, uh, deploy, and then test loop going on, we wanted to avoid dependency on the REPL. And it was honestly, the browser REPL was, uh, until very recently, there was a, a patch uh, coming from Chaz, I think, soon for improving it and making it less brittle. Uh, we would, didn't want to go down that rabbit hole, so we optimized our process to get fast feedback without having a REPL involved. Um, if you're fans of the REPL, uh, there's other ways about getting a fast feedback loop. Uh, so we've shown how on a library that you're targeting both ClojureScript and Clojure, 
you can get the fast feedback loop from the JVM. Uh, we should point out that even if you're developing a library that is only going to be used on the closure script side, there's still benefits to wiring things up in such a way that you could test it on the JVM. Uh, the fast immediate feedback loop and introspection through NREPL and uh, closure.test being the prime among those. Uh, Sisyphus.el, which is going to be on GitHub soonish. soonish. Yeah, I, I can promise this week. But yeah, probably next week. Roman has, in all fairness, done more Emacs Lisp coding in the last month than he has uh, closure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, three libraries. There was. Uh, how many people stick your hands up have seen uh, the terminal of Tom Hanks? No one. Okay, a few. Uh, do you remember Victor Noworski, the character's name? So he wrote a library, Noworski.el, which helps you live in the terminal. It was a, a cleanup of some hackish um, test runner and uh, ANSI term um, code that I had before for running multiple terminals in, uh, in ELISP or yeah. from Emacs. The second one is Proctor, which um, allows you to, if you have a test comment, it will automatically have you, uh, provide you this feedback loop that we're having over here with the green and the red as soon as the uh, test returns a uh, zero or one status code on the on Unix. Yeah, so if you've been to university and you sat in a room with the invigilators or the proctors walking around supervising your test, Proctor does that for, for you in Emacs. Yeah. Um, and then Sisyphus, the one we're using in this case here, uh, is a layer above both of those and it's using Proctor's uh, test notification mechanism to show the status of the, the test runs and the build runs. Um, we're running this inside of a Linux VM, so the feedback is just through the mode line and the message line at the bottom. But uh, if you have uh, a platform where there's Growl support or um, desktop notification support of some kind, you would get those notifications as well. Mm -hmm. And if you're working on a, a larger team or you want to share your test results, pipe into IRC. Not that hard. Yeah. Uh, OK, so let's go back. So. Where we want to arrive to uh, for conclusions, for conclusions, um, we already have ported some of the libraries because we have had the need. Uh, Protocol Monitor and Cloud being the, the examples of third parties. We even translated the Dallap library, which is the one we use to run line Dallap, um, to work on Clojure Script as well, because we are using it for the same Dallap library we're using for navigating forms for HTML transformation. Uh, and live-like with yeah. the CSS selectors. So it's a, a tree-walking library that walks itself and outputs a modified version of itself for ClojureScript. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Just because that was fun. Really meta. Um, and I'm really looking forward for people to get started and uh, tackle. If, if the library in the back end uh, on Clojure makes sense on the front end with ClojureScript, port it. You know, it, there are tools already to do that. It's not really difficult. I want to see more libraries of those out there. I want to see my options multiply it. Independently, if you use line dollop or CLJX or Buster CLGS or ClojureScript.test, closure yeah, like, let's, let's get started with more ClojureScript libraries. Um, thank you.